Good, man. Everything's good. I'm just going to uh, just screw around here. But uh, the main thing was I just wanted to test out the microphone and say hello to you guys. Uh, I really don't know what to do. Let, let's just see what... Uh, Let's see what's going on with uh, Jane and David. I mean, it's Thanksgiving night, and Jane and David are like the uh, the matriarch and patriarch of this whole network. Like, why aren't they giving the night off? Put the people on, like, you know, the third string. Why, why are they being forced? Thanksgiving night. How many of you watched a movie today, right? Hey, we're going to be hey. things off by improving sound. Love. This is from the one and only Bose Corporation, born in 1964. Bose and I have that in common. And that means we're both 29. And, um. Ah, uh, see what he did there? This is extraordinary. This is. It doesn't make bad sound louder. It makes your sound more clear. I'm going to join you because I bought this. Yeah, I know. One As of your girls owns this, yep. right? It's awesome. This oh, one of her daughters has this. Price. Now, ordinarily, this is $199. One of Jane's daughters has $1. this. All right, I'm not promising anything, but fuck it. I'll open up a I'll open up a bingo card. And I'll even break my own rule. If Jane talking about her daughter is on the square, uh, I'll I'll mark it off. Let's see. Do do do. Jane spackles her face. What? I don't like this card. Give me a card where Jane mentions one of her daughters. That's what I'm after. Give me a new card. What do we got? Oh, I'm sorry. Is it just me? Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Guys, yeah, just, yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you, uh, Melinda. I, um, I am not good. There we go. All right. Uh... Yeah, I want a uh, good evening, Danielle. Good evening. I don't know why I'm on, but I'm kind of cheating because I want a bingo card where Jane mentions one of her daughters on the card. So I'm just going to keep regenerating one until I get it because I'm cheating. Uh, oh, come on. That's like four cards now. You're not going to hook me up. I refuse to settle for nothing less than Jane mentioning one of her daughters. Are you kidding me? <laughs> there's, there's too many squares for this game. That's the problem. Whoops. How'd that happen? Come on, Jane. Where are you? Jane spackles her face. Come on, man. This is like eight cards now. This Is this not just a perfect example of how things go for me? Only when you want something can you not get it. You're here. Did you send a message? Uh, I'm sorry, Marsha. I didn't. I'm sorry. And I've only been on for a couple of minutes, and I've only been just goofing around. Uh, okay, here we go. We got we got the card we need. And I don't know, again, if I'm going to... I don't know how long I'm going to be on. I'm going to know if I'm going to really play bingo all the way through. I don't know what I'm doing. Just hanging out with you guys. Uh, Marsha, I, I figured out my problem with my microphone. So it should be much uh, louder than it was last night. Uh, loud and clear. Not distorted, but loud to where everybody can sort of set their volume to their liking. Yeah, I know. It's tough. It's kind of like me watching a a, a a green grass movie yesterday, you know? Just sometimes you got to understand. It's when I watched Roller Gator a couple of months ago, I I couldn't I, I couldn't meet up with friends after. I was too distraught. So I know what you mean. Okay, so uh David's got a thing on his head. David is here. All right, we have jeans or pants that are really sweatpants or pajamas. Customer call, war zone audio, before is better and a before and after. Vague competitor reference. Host struggles with product demo. Dumb alternative use of a product. 
Mention a vacation four months or more away. <laughs> Stretching clothing or bending shoes. Any winter holiday item that's not Christmas. Slow pour. Anything Mizrahi, Batho, or Molly. Host goes over color choices. Easy pay payments, $5 or less. Alberti, befuddling tangent. HSM British guy won't go away. Cross promotion. Doodle do. Foreign channel food. Foodgasm that isn't David. Exploited pet. Tope. You don't have to think about it. I think we're still waiting for the square. You know we hear this like at least a couple of times a month or something, but of course uh, it hasn't happened. And finally, Jane mentions one of her daughters. Movie today, right? Hey, we're going to be uh, kicking things off by improving sound. Love. This is from the one and only Bose Corporation, born in 1964. Bose and I have that in common. And that means we're both 29. And um, this is extraordinary. It doesn't make bad sound louder. It makes your sound more clear. I'm going to join you because I bought this. Yeah, I know. One I of your girls get. owns this, yep. right? It's awesome. This is an amazing price. Now, ordinarily, this is $199. On QVC, but tonight, I thought she mentioned her daughter there. Right, we're going to save you almost 50 bucks. It is live. How many of you are like, I can't watch QVC. I'm not going to save. I'm not going to save a whole lot of money. Yes, you are. 50 bucks. I, I, I did. A, you guys saw what happened, right? Where, where was the daughter? It was in there somewhere. That means we're both 29. And um, this is extraordinary. It doesn't make bad sound louder. It makes your sound more clear. I'm going to join you because I bought this. Yeah, I know. One as of your girls gift. owns this, yep. right? It's awesome. This is an amazing. I bought this as a gift, I think. Price. Now, ordinarily. I could have sworn she said for her, one of her daughters. $199. Oh, man. You are like, I can't watch QVC. I'm not going to save. I'm not going to save a whole lot of money. Yes, you are. 50 bucks, almost 50 bucks off the regular price. I feel like if you wear something like this on your head, you're legally like you're, you're, you're legally a pinata at that point. We're allowed to pick up sticks and, and beat you if, if you wear this on your head. I'm going to take this turkey. I was going to say, you have a turkey on your head. Ah, uh, okay. I have a turkey in my head. I hate to point out the obvious. Um, Brett Hamilton. I, I guess David heard what I said. Is joining us. Happy Thanksgiving to you, Happy sir. Happy Thanksgiving. Hello, everybody. Welcome to... How uh, big a bird did you all cook today? <sighs> Meg did a 19 and a half pound turkey. Oh, my heavens. How many people did you feed? Five. To what everybody. Do you have left? Oh, I see it. There it is. Good one. What about these fake candles over here? Actually, did, did I go over? Okay. Uh, did, 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 uh, okay. And no candles. All right. Leftovers. A lot of leftovers. A lot of leftovers. Nothing better. Nothing nope. wrong with the turkey leftovers. No, 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 no. <laughs> hey, this is an extraordinary <laughs> sound bar at yeah. an amazing price. And so did you easy turn to that up because only has two tables. sappy yeah, ass music you off. And you go, oh, it's just for the TV. But as you can hear, hopefully you can hear, we're playing some music from it. What is so this? It doubles, and I'm gonna get what is this movie that isn't a movie? Part, video part and all that in a second. But listen to this. We'll go from this to something that'll make the hair stand up on your right on this your little balls. Tiny, this little tiny footprint right here. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. So I can stream music from my MP3 player, from my phone. This is great for karaoke. Tablet, whatever, right? It's coming Come back. and behold and him, one born the king oh, of oh, angels. <laughs> this is extraordinary. <laughs> this is extraordinary. Uh, can you tell you guys I'm kind of off my rocker? Let's go over to channel 21. I want some foreign food on Thanksgiving. Give me some foreign uh, Thanksgiving food. Please. Kräuter caps. Whoa. What have we here? Uh, do we got some health stuff uh snake oil what do we got mm, maybe not wenn sie die gerne möchten für 59 99 gerade in der erkältungszeit wenn sie merken der hals kratzt what is this this looks like like a 
pile of earwax. Um Sie herum. Alles ist erkältet. Schützen Sie sich. Bitte nehmen Sie die Liquid Kräuter Caps, um durchzuatmen, tief durchzuatmen. 320187 ist die Bestellung und Sie wissen. Alright. I mean, I guess it's not food. Pills aren't really food, is it? Alright, no dice there. Why did I start bingo? I don't want to play. I just want to watch something stupid. You guys got anything you want to watch? Besides what I can't really just watch along with on my own stream. But I've been watching since 9 o'clock last night. I got some good riffs in too, by the way. I got a couple of chuckles out of the, out of the crowd. Uh, HSM British guy. Uh, he's British, so he probably doesn't celebrate Thanksgiving. He's the perfect guy to be working tonight. Oh, come let us. ...button on a nice big screen. And I love my Let's Fit smartwatch, and so does do my ya. husband. But I'll tell you what my watch did not do. It's Some Korean War footage. Did not make or take phone calls. It did not make or take phone calls. Yeah, you know, I, I worked on a documentary that. Uh, yeah, it won. That's the one that won the Emmy, right? I worked on a documentary as an assistant editor not long after I graduated college when I moved back to D.C. and uh, started working in post production with this uh, small. Production company, uh, and we made a documentary called uh, Korean War Stories. Uh, came out like in two, 2002, uh, 2001, sorry. It came out in 2001, but we won, I say we, I mean, Robert Youth, this guy, this was my boss. He basically, he and I just sat together in chairs in front of a giant editing suite and edited this uh, documentary, you know, taking all the interviews and archive footage of war footage and everything and uh, threw it all together and uh, made a documentary. Uh, it was on PBS. I wonder if I got a credit in here somewhere. I, I, I doubt it'll be on IMDb. Uh, but yeah, I worked on this. Uh Production, all cast and crew. I doubt it's all. Because if I'm not on here, I'm going to feel... Okay, edited by... I see, this is my friend Mike Noble. Mike's actually been in chat with us uh, uh, before. Maybe you remember, Maybe Marsh or somebody remembers the name uh, Mike Noble popping in here. Uh he he was the head guy again. I was assistant, so I guess being an ass the assistant, I didn't make the cut. Uh, but it won uh, outstanding historical documentary uh, in the two thousand two Emmys, like national Emmy. So I was at a, what at the age of twenty three, twenty four. I worked on a project that won a national Emmy. I peaked at twenty three. Where is where where is where is that? Doesn't it have an award thing in here somewhere? Doesn't it show you accolades and shit? All right, what if I just looked up two two thousand two Emmy Outstanding Historical Documentary? I believe that was the name of the. Uh, yeah, I believe that was the name of the uh, category, right? Uh, where is it? Best in News and Magazine. I know this is all self-serving, guys. I told you this wasn't going to be a a normal stream. Here it is: outstanding historical documentary, long form, a winner. Korean War Stories. So there you go. If 
you're into the Korean War, if you're into documentaries, uh, check this out. Actually, I think I found I found this just sitting on YouTube at some point because you know it's like over twenty years old now. And unfortunately, Robert, the director, my boss, uh, he passed away a few years back. So there was a time where he was telling me like, hey, man, my stuff's getting put up on YouTube and I want to take it down. And I'm like, it's it's just good exposure for you, man. Like, roll with it. He didn't think so. All right. I'm definitely not doing anything in the realm of entertaining. What is she doing? What is this? That's why we are so. You know, I thought that said left, a leftist, a leftist smartwatch. I'm like, come on, does everything have to be political at this point? Thrilled. We are bringing you the best, most fully featured Let's Fit watch we have ever offered in the history of HSN. It does everything. Whoa, a 1.83 inch screen. I thought that only went up to like 1.81. That's a that's nearly two inches of screen. I don't know what I'm doing here. What am I? God damn! What the fucking uh, Thanksgiving game show? There's got to be I don't know. There's got to be something out here that's Thanksgiving feast of faves and turkeys. Family feud. feud. Dolly Parton's halftime show. Good Lord. This woman is 77. Man. Somebody get a hold of Dolly's DNA. All right, let's see what this is. Three hours and 43 minutes. And this is block one. Good God. Okay, okay, we got a list here. New $25,000 pyramid. Jeopardy. Diamond head game. I've never heard of that. That might be worth looking at. Oddball. Never heard that. Oh, yeah. That, that bit where the, the parents, like, pretend like they ate all the candy. That was a good bit, but... Every year, like forever? I don't know. I want to look at this oddball one. Uh, Is he on or has he cut a video? Didn't we watch Sean's video for the week earlier in the week? Three days ago. Yeah, we already... We already checked in with Sean this week. And I'm sure Lauren has uh, got the night off, right? How do you eat turkey and all that with those nails? Oh, wait, she's on. Oh, it's with Joyce. Never mind. Joyce, no offense, but you, you are no Lauren. Who's Joyce? I don't know. Let's, let's see. There's Joyce. Your family members or, you know, your She's about a foot shorter than uh, than Lauren. They they should probably adjust the uh, the tripod a little bit. That's true. She can carve the turkey. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, by the way, what is it? so giant Gila, giant Gila monster is on now. Oh, I love how everybody's able to make references to, like, Trump and Biden and stuff. Unlike the Twitch channel, who gave me a permanent lifetime ban for one Trump reference riff. I still can't get over that. Like, dude, I've been a fan of your content since I was, like, 14. And you're really going to cut me off for life. Just because you, you're, you're a little annoyed that I'm like, just asking you like, hey, so we, we're not allowed to bring up political people, but where's the cutoff? I can make an Abraham Lincoln reference, can't I? 
All right. Well, then what about a, a William Howard Taft reference? That's 20th century. Is that too soon? Can I can I mention William Howard Taft? That's okay. Oh, wait, I can even make a Nixon joke? All right, so where's the cutoff? Reagan? Okay, that makes sense. All right, I get it now. So any, anything before Reagan is good. Anything after Reagan, uh, lifetime ban. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I'm sitting there watching, like, Kevin Murphy make a Trump reference in the show. And I'm like, gee, they seem to be doing it. Yeah, but, uh, you know, let's... Well, look at the, look at the bow tie on my boy right here. Hold on. This is the newlywed game. Okay, I want to see what that oddball game is. But, my God, the bow tie... Folks, Bob Eubanks. And two and two. And here we go. God, remember that. God. This has to be in line for worst, like, game show host background ever. I've always hated this, like, lattice, this stupid thing. Five point questions. As you know, gentlemen, Card sharks. As you predict your wife will answer the same question. When she that had a few reincarnations, didn't it? I remember the Wink Martindale version, but wasn't there a version before and a version after? Now, if her answer matches your prediction, you'll chalk up five points towards a grand prize selected especially for you. So listen carefully, gentlemen. Oh, my. Look at that. Each question is worth five. Now, that is drip right there. Five points. Each correct prediction brings you closer to your exciting grand prize. And here's question one. Gentlemen, will your wife say you or she last made the other jealous? Rob? Uh, I hate this stuff is so stupid. I want to see what this oddball show is. I've never heard of oddball, and it says 1986, which that's why I'm curious because that was right in my prime of being a kid watching every single game show that was around, like Bumper Stumpers and a bunch of other like obscure stuff. But oddball, I have no recollection of. I wish they would have broken this up into chapters. I'm trying to get to it without skipping too far ahead. All right, this must be it. This must be it. Wait, did it say pilot? This might be something that only had one episode. Yeah, Oddball Pilot. February 1st, 86. Come on, Marsha, you're a game show uh, fanatic, right? Or historian. That sounds better. Uh, any, uh, recollection of this? Because I am completely out of the loop here. Okay. Okay. And the name of the show, Oddball Pilot Number 1, VTR 2186, Director Mark Breslow. I'm working full time. Oh, we go. All right, that's the NBC chime. Okay, the set. And again, is that Jamie Farr? Jamie Farr? Well, well, now I know why. Let's meet the well, now I know why this failed. Jamie Farr is not a game show host. Come on, man. From Florence Henderson. Marla Gibbs. Oh, I'm sorry. Marla, Marla Gibbs. Sorry. Why did I say Florence Henderson? Why did I say that? Wait a minute, what was, it, what was her name on the Jeffersons? Was it Florence? Please tell me I didn't have the worst brain fart ever. What was Marla Gibbs' name on the Jeffersons? Somebody help me out. From Too Close for Comfort, Lydia Cornell. From Mama's Family. Oh, it's Vicki Lawrence. Vicki Lawrence. She was always on Florence Henderson. No, but that's that's the mom from the Brady Bunch. What is Marla Gibbs's Jefferson's character's name? 
Oh, it is Florence. It's just not Henderson. Florence Johnston. Okay. Okay. Lawrence Johnston. All right, so so it, it was mixed in my head, but I wasn't too far off, right? I called her Florence Henderson. Oh, it's the, is that the Where's the Beef Lady? They got the Where's the Beef Lady? Is that isn't that her? Negro Bulls and the men. Oh no, it's not the where. It's the lady that was with the where. No, no, okay, I get it. No, she was in that movie, uh, Moving Violations. And she does a scene with the Where's the Beef Lady in the movie. You got me? Follow me here. That's that's where I got the confusion here. All right, it's, it's this scene right here. See, here they are together. This, this movie is god-awful, but I've watched it like 500 times. All right, so that's the where's the beef lady, and then here's the lady that's on the game show. See, it's hilarious because they're old and they can't see each other. You see, you see the the funny part. He's a black guy. <laughs> and then they start driving and she, she can't drive. All right. It's Mr. Magoo. Oh. You don't want to hear it, trust me. Plus, I'm hoping that helps with copyright. Yeah, she got in the wrong car because it's... Uh, she thinks that's her friend. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> All right. So that's that lady. From Happy Days, Anson Williams. Huh. From New Heart, Tom Poston. From Falcon Crest, Daniel Green. Come on, like the eighth most popular character from Falcon Crest. You're you're digging the bottom of the barrel now. And Dick Martin. And here is the chief football. By the way, we're there's going to be real contestants, right? I don't want just celebrities. Jamie Foxx. I want real people. Yeah, or uh, like uh, maybe like a not what's my line, but uh, yeah, any one one of those panel things. I'm sure there'll be a contestant. You're too You're just too let, let, let's try and guess just based on what we see right now. What the hell the gist of this show is? I gotta blow my nose. Hold on a sec. And no, don't cheat and look it up. I'm going to say because they've got, I mean, clearly it's something common. I mean, it's got to be like, uh, what's the, uh, what is it? Uh, match game. It's going to be one of those like comedy games, right? Because you got Jamie Farr hosting. The name of it is Oddball. You got celebrity panels up the ass. I'm just trying to figure out what is the angle that is going to be different than something like a match game. That's very nice. Very, very nice of you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Welcome to Oddball, the game where it pays to be different. And I ought to know because I've been paid different all my life. Oh, it might be the reverse of match game where the idea is to give like the weirdest answer that nobody matches, right? Yeah, I'm thinking a not match and you're thinking a not match. Okay. Let's go talk to the lady oddball. But that seems almost incredibly easy. 
you know, it's not too difficult, depending on the question in match game, to guess sort of like the popular fill in the blank word or whatever. But to just come up with one that nobody, like, let's say it's like, uh, Sir Edmund Hillary went to Alaska thinking he'd find oil. Instead, he found this. And uh, I could answer, uh, I don't know, lasagna. And of course, no one else is going to answer that. Just come up with any random nonsensical answer and you win, right? Uh, maybe I'm just, I don't know, I'm putting the cart before the horse. Balls. Hello, Lady Oddballs. Hi, Hi. Marla, I know you're Wait, do you guys remember Liars Club? I might want to watch a Liars Club clip because that show was so stupid. But it was funny to listen to the the uh, the 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 celebrities like you know invent some made up use for whatever the item is. You're enjoying two two seven. Yeah. But do you? Do oh, you this is two two seven era. So this has got to be at least what, like eighty six. I'm going to guess 86 on this. Oh, it did say 86, didn't it, in the thing? Okay. All right, all right, all right. Honestly, do you miss the Jeffersons? Well, I stuffed the shrimp and put him in the oven. Sorry about that, Marsha. So, Short-term memory. Gee, I wonder why. Me, actually, on the deep freeze. You're talking about Sherman? You talking about Sherman. <laughs> By the way, what's really funny, Marsha, is I, this is... You know what Sherman Hem Hemsley is doing in 1986? Jefferson's over. Amen hasn't started yet. You remember what he was working on right about now, don't you? A little something called ghost fever. <laughs> we better go talk to the gentleman eyeballs. Hello, gentlemen eyeballs. Hello, sir. You don't even talk to the other three. You don't even say hello to Vicki Lawrence. She's a national treasure. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Oddball Master. Anson, yes, you got sir. a new project. Please tell me about it. A new project. For... Name any Anson Williams non-Happy Days project. Go ahead, I'll give you the rest of the stream. Well, it's a film for PBS Wonderworks called The Lone Star Kid. Well, there you go. It's a, it's a PBS movie. Yeah, who wasn't, Marsha? That's the question. Had the opportunity to direct I'll, I'll say 75 percent of the eight celebrities on stage right now have been on the love boat bad and it's on a and i won't even count jamie farr for monday eight o'clock good luck to you thank you it's time to meet your teammates for today open sesame <laughs> go higher <laughs> well it's either that or like 80s i mean i'm saying six out of eight i mean all right so we got contestants I'm guessing this is like their scores are going to pop up back here. Lady Oddballs, this is your teammate, Oddball. Her name is Nancy Carr. Please tell me something about yourself. Well, I'm, uh, um, my name is Nancy Carr. I'm from Los Please tell me something about yourself. Okay, well, let me start by saying the one thing that you already said. My name. Los Angeles, and I'm a bilingual junior high school teacher. One of the us? <laughs> you speak French. I didn't know you spoke French. Uh, <laughs> Vicky knows how to say buenos dias. Gentlemen, your teammate is Randy Economy, and yes. I promise you, I will not. You must be tired of those, oh, those last name jokes. So I have I'll, heard I'll them leave all. You alone. So I've heard them all. Well, what's the funny? Oh my God! Look at this Matt Gates-looking mother. Yes, you've heard, Randy. Uh, the nation's economy must be bad, so uh, how's the local economy doing? I've heard them all. I mean, anything with the economy. Is well, tell us about yourself. My name is Randy Economy. I'm a native of Southern California. <laughs> like Seriously, I, said. I just heard that someplace. <laughs> I'm a native of Southern California. I own my own political consulting firm, and uh, it's really great to be here. Well, good luck to both Thank of you. you. Celebrities. <laughs> You're going to communicate a person, a place, or a thing to your respective partners by writing down a one-word clue. But here's the catch. Ah! Yes, there's always a catch to something. Oh, always a catch. Yeah. If your clue is duplicated by anyone else on either team, that clue is knocked out of play. In other words, it's eliminated. So you've got to really think like an oddball. All right, we're going to start with a challenger today. And the challenger... Ah, okay. So you got to... So this is kind of like scattergories... But you can't give obvious clues. 
You gotta find that kind of middle middle clue. Manager is you, Nancy, and this is the one hundred dollars subject. Kindly retire to the soundproof Adios, room Nancy. and be very careful. All right. Adios, Adios, to to <laughs> As you. Okay, the way those doors closed was really awkward. All right. Hey, DDH, happy Thanksgiving, man. As you can see, I never get too close to that soundproof door. <laughs> soundproof my ass. Be very careful, all right? I also to be soundproof. As you can see, I never get too close to that soundproof door. <laughs> all right, now they're sealed. They cannot hear what we're going to say. Celebrities, prepare to write down your one-word clue to this subject. Lady Godiva. Uh -huh. Lady Godiva. All right, so you can't say, like, chocolate, right? Is it just one word, clues? Uh, can you say naked? Naked's too obvious. Maybe naked is more obvious than chocolate. Horse? Naked horse chocolate lady? I mean, those would, those would be my categories. I would say naked horse chocolate lady. <laughs> the subject is worth $100 to the player who gets it. And remember, try to come up with a unique clue. All clues that are duplicated will be eliminated. <laughs> okay, all the lights are on. That means they finished writing down their one-word clues. We're going to start with the ladies. Marla, I don't like one-word one clue clues. Lady Godiva. Well, I thought that she probably did this. She took a ride. Right. Lydia, your one word clue. She covered herself completely in her hair. <laughs> Vicky? Hair ride. This is very chic. She was an equestrian. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's actually good. And this game might not be too bad. I could see how this game might work. What made it fail? <laughs> I hate those college graduates. <laughs> Nidra, your one word clue. So I'll start out in the bottom here. Hair. Hair. Oh, you blew it. Duplication. Lydia and Nidra, you have been knocked out of play. Discard your card. Hold on to them for a while. I'm sorry, Lady Godiva lost her hair. That's going to be very embarrassing. All right, so we have equestrian and ride remaining. However, however, the gentleman could duplicate you and you could be eliminated from the play. Anson, what is your one word clue for uh, Lady Godiva? Well, I heard she got a little fat by eating too much chocolate. Huh? Uh, huh? Huh? Let me body shame her, huh? Yeah. Brand name, right? Uh, I said that she, she'd forgotten. See, I, I got all the male clues. Chocolate and naked. Those, those are chocolate, naked. Uh, what were my other two? Something. I... <laughs> She took off all her clothes to make that. Oh, that I see. She's, she's oh the horse. Sauce, this lady Chocolate naked horse. Yeah. Right, she's naked. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's naked. <laughs> I see. All right. Fine. She she was riding. She was uh, well. She was bareback and. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna guess right now that this next guy. Yeah, I'm wondering if he's Tom Poston did naked in order to try and get around if someone else said naked, so he can argue. No, I, I said naked. Different word. Can't 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 fault me for that. But I got a feeling next, this next guy doesn't even have a clue who Lady Godiva is. Bare front, right? So he's going to come up with just some. I don't know what he's going to come up with. Which way she was heading, south or north? You could see everything. All right, Daniel. This is an odd one. Ancient, because she's before my time. <laughs> see, that's exactly. That's that's his way of going. I don't know anything about this. I don't know what the hell this is. This is some old shit. I don't get it. Uh, ancient. He'll probably use that same clue for another <laughs> another game. Dick. Well, actually, mine is a. Uh, a lot of people don't know that bareback is is a one word. A lot of people don't know that. Do our, yes, yes, they do. Our, our judges know that. Oh, right, they know that. Bare back. Yeah, the, yeah, come on. You, you have to get this. You get. You got naked, bare back, chocolate. 
Yeah, that 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 would be the one. That's all Jay, I would need. There, is naked acceptable? <laughs> naked, naked, <laughs> and cho chocolate naked <laughs> ancient bareback. That's gonna. I got I got to be honest. The guys came up with the better clues, even though this guy came up with the worst of the eight. Uh, the other three are better than the other team's four. <laughs> and we have equestrian and ride. All right, kindly. Although uh, although equestrian. Not bad. It's only going to help the other side, though. Hide your clues. Hide your clues. Thank you. Remember, the subject is Lady Godiva. Let's bring back your teammates. Nancy? Yeah, and I called it, man. I just knew. This, like, Jamoke from Falcon Crest with his awful mullet. He looks like a guy who's just been doing, like, underwear modeling for Sears and finally caught a gig. He doesn't know any history of anything. Randy, we start with you, Nancy. Okay, I guess that's mean. You can be an underwear model and and be very, uh, you know, well versed in historical things. See, the subject is worth one. But probably not. As you can see, <laughs> two of your oddballs have been knocked out of play, Lydia and Nidra. However, Marla and Vicky remain. Marla, your one-word clue. <laughs> Ride. Ride. Vicky. Equestrian. Equestrian. Which really makes ride uh, like null and void. That's so, uh, uh, she's got one clue to work with. While well, he's got chocolate, naked, bareback. Plus, he's already heard equestrian. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah the, the guy's going to get Equestrian this. Equestrian ride for $100. <laughs> Is it a horse? Yeah, it's no, a famous it's a horse. horse. Hold on to those clues. Okay. They may help you, Randy. Ah, she could have at least been like, is it Sea Biscuit? Or, you know, Man of War? I mean, name like a famous horse. You can see all of your eyeballs have remained in. Okay. Well, he it's heard them. He clue. heard the clues. But, but I think they reverse the order in the next round. That would be my guess to where that advantage evens out. Chocolate. Tom? <laughs> Pay attention over here. This we'll get over there in a moment, guys. Tom. It is, and this is naked chocolate. Naked as in naked. Oh, huh. naked as in naked. Daniel, ancient. He's like the AC Slater of this Saved by the Bell gang. Dick, bareback. All right, let's put them together. Bareback, ancient, naked chocolate equestrian ride for one hundred. I hope it's Lady Godiva. Yes, yeah. it is Lady Godiva. <laughs> And you're on your way to the goal of $400 and a chance to play our one-shot jackpot. And today, that jackpot is worth $20,000. Ain't nobody winning no jackpot. Nobody ever wins shit. Randy's in the lead with $100. Nancy has... What? Who? Jamie Farr? We'll be back. That jackpot is worth $20,000. We'll be back with a $200 subject right after this. Uh, I don't think so. DDH, get your mind out of the gutter. We're back with a $200 subject. <laughs> Randy's in the lead with $100. Nancy has zero. And we're going to begin this one with the ladies again. Would you kindly return to your soundproof room? We'll what do you mean, begin with the ladies again? I thought, wait, why aren't you reversing the order? Doesn't that make it even? Be a wake up call. Close sesame. All right, they can hear. Celebrities, I want you to write down your one word clue to this subject harem Eight. harem uh, i would go uh uh what, what do you call a, a chic or, or or shake or chic sultan that's probably better that's probably better how about how about scarum <laughs> If I'm allowed to use it, I would go Scarum. H A R E M. Harem. Why are you looking at me that way, Miss Lawrence? I may be hoping something brilliant would come I from your nose to my brain. Have a harem. My wife found out. Uh, 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 bigamy. Out. Remember to put your lights on when you have finished writing your one-word clue. 
The lights are on. If, if the Falcon Crest guy writes, or I'm sorry, I meant polygamy. Did I say bigamy? I'm sorry. Again, I just take whatever I say that's wrong, but you know the word I was thinking of and just, just go with that word. They have completed <laughs> writing their clues. Ladies, we're going to start with you. Your one-word subject, Marla, for harem. Well, actually, anybody dumb enough to be in the harem wouldn't want their face seen. So I put veil. <laughs> okay. I can go a lot of ways. Like Madonna, Mother Teresa or some shit. Good oddball thinking. Lydia. It's a good thing I didn't almost put. Okay, is this one word? I think it is. Belly button. Judges? Belly button yes. is one word. Yes, yes, it is. I love you again. <laughs> People are going to say, uh, like a dance. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, there was a little lint in her belly button. There, so I just put that out of there. Oh, uh, uh, the improv of Jamie well, Farr. Yeah, there's someone intelligent around here to help clarify things. <laughs> Bigamist. Bigamist. There, uh, see, I did say bigamy. So was I wrong? <laughs> now you got me questioning my own. Oh, I can't even spell it right. There you go. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't wrong. Okay. God damn it. I'll never question myself again, even though that's a lie. Deidre? Hopefully my crossword puzzle education has helped out a lot in this case. If I'm speaking with the intelligentsia, you understand. Oda. Help me out. Oda, oh, that's correct. Yes, that is the three letter word. Oda. Harem. You're Harem. absolutely Oda. correct. Aren't they oh, wonderful? What? You're, you is that like, Oda, Harem, what, what is, what is, what is that like the, oh, wow. This lady's too damn smart. <laughs> they ain't gonna know what an Oda is. Okra, maybe. All right, let me, let me get this. Yeah, Oda. Like, she, she's apparently an expert on this. Right, I'm just getting rid of the bingo here. Wait, where did... Uh-oh, did I close it? Did I just close? I'm sorry. We'll get right back there. That's true. A, a three-letter word like that, that does make sense. Oh, that, that sounds like a crossword clue. Whoa, 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 whoa. Belly button and veil. Oda Harris. Yeah, that's a new cologne. Oda Harris. <laughs> However, I think uh, gentlemen could button. knock you out. The only one I'm really worried about is the word Oda. I'm sure there'll be a duplication on that. Oh, one. Sure there will. All right, gentlemen, oddballs. What is your one word? By the way, her, her. Uh, I'm sure there'll be a duplication. Handwriting on. for the letter D. That's 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 pretty sweet. That's a pretty sweet D. That oh, sure. All right, gentlemen, oddballs, what is your one-word clue, Anson? Well, Jamie, it sounds to me like a hell of a lot of fun. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> that was just to get a laugh. That's not going to help your contestant, dude. Come on, fun. Come on, man. <laughs> Woof. By the way, Vicki Lawrence is like bigamist. Anson Williams. Fun. Everybody's got their own. Uh... Well, it's not necessary. <laughs> oh, he knows. Oh, well, chic, chic <laughs> talk. What have you got? Huh? Well, it's not all that much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to take care of guarding the door. Oh. What? Oh. I put uh, Arabian in the hopes that maybe that would lead them in the right direction. Arabian fun. They're not necessarily limited to uh, 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 a magic carpet. Arabian fun. That's true. Daniel, we're going in the right direction. 
I'm thinking of group fun. Group. Ah, group. An Arabian fun. <laughs> Do you understand the word group by itself? Has zero help towards trying to come up with the word harem. A veil, I get. Like, I don't know. Just yeah, Even if it was just like a piece of a clue. Yeah, wives. Uh... Now you would think Arabian group that uh, Marla and I would cancel each other out, except the last harem that I saw was in a ski resort in Colorado. <laughs> Veil. Veil. That's a duplication. Oh, they caught me. Marla they caught and me. Dick are knocked out. <laughs> Kindly remove your veils. Oh my goodness, that's what you look like. All right, so we have. May, may I see the uh, the clues, please? We have group Arabian fun. We now again. If the, if the female contestant has to guess first, and then the guy, if she doesn't get it, excuse me, I just burped. If she doesn't get it, the guy gets to go with extra clue. I don't understand how this is fair. We have Oda, bigamist, and belly button. Hide your clues. Hide your clues. There's no way you're going to get it with just, unless you play that crossword puzzle. You're not going to get it with just bigamist and. Uh, Please, the subject is harem. Let's bring back. Our teammates. Get on out here. Okay. As you can see, one of your odd... Yo, this lady is a foot taller. Why is everybody in Hollywood so small? No wonder I never made it. ...ball lady. These have been knocked out of play. Nancy, however, you have Lydia and Vicky and Nidra. This is the $200 subject. Lydia, you're one... Why are you lose. making her go first? Belly button. Vicky? Bigamist. Nidra. Oda. <laughs> uh, uh, Oda? Bigamist. And look at her look. Like, you be, you play crosswords. And hey, Sanj. For $200. Hanging out. Hanging out. Having ourselves a party. And the lead. Is it a harem? Yes! What? I'm impressed. And yes, that is Marla, a.k.a. Florence from the Jefferson Gibbs. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it's that Oda clue. There's no way just belly button and uh, what was the other one? Nancy, tell the audience what gave you the clue. Oda. I knew it. <laughs> she was crossword puzzle. That's right. Was... All right. This... Wow. Man. If she go on if she goes on to win like the jackpot or whatever, and it like it's like life changing money, it all comes down to just like playing a cross there's no way other than playing a crossword and seeing that word. A hundred times before. As far as Nancy, two hundred dollars. Randy, one hundred dollars. And we'll be back right after this. Oda word. I thought that was a dog with Garfield. The score is two hundred dollars to one hundred dollars. And that means that we're going to play a, a $400 subject. And this one we're going to play a little differently, okay? But we're going to send you into the soundproof room. Is she up to 92 now? God damn. Holy Toledo. Like, when was this taken? She looks great here. You go, Marla. All right. Uh, let's see what happens. All right. Close the door. Ladies, remove your, your, uh, your clues. Yeah, good genetics. Right. So I don't have it. Write down your one she word does. Clue to this subject. The subject is Wheaties. 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 Okay. Uh, I mean, as long as... I don't think you can use the word breakfast. Obviously, breakfast of champions, but I think somebody has to write down champions, right? But somebody else might write down champions. We well, need God. Uh, I would say Olympics. 
Olympic cereal. Olympic cereal would be my two main uh, go-tos that I don't think would get repeated. W-H-E-A-T-I-E-S. Uh, you might be right about cereal. Yes, sir. But I think it's better than... Uh, Uh, what was the other one? Daniel? Yeah, I feel like breakfast or All champions right. would be a problem. Done. That means the celebrities have completed writing down their one word subject. Remember, the subject. I definitely use Olympics. Not reveal your clues. Let's bring back your teammates. Maybe just the word food. Olympics okay. food. The celebrities have written down their clues. This time the two of you will all Milk. be selecting one clue at a time. <laughs> the first player to guess the subject wins the game and goes on to play the big back the black so yeah that's why i would go like Jackpot. milk olympics <laughs> another game food Mark Goodson's working on. I, here's or the some shit thing about this uh, this particular playoff subject uh, if you choose a duplicate you lose your turn to guess nancy you're in the lead you're going to go first pick an oddball which oh. oddball do you want okay um lydia okay flakes it's not flakes. bad for the game your answer is it dandruff <laughs> Over to you, Randy. I'm gonna take Tom. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, it oh, was too good. You, you lose that turn to get. Over to you, uh, Nancy. Vicky. Vicky. I said retin. Retin. Ah. No. Oh, but you know, you know what? You know what it is, though. You don't even need a guess. You don't even need a clue. Come on, she just gave it away. Mary Lou Retton Kellogg's, if, unless he's like from Mars, he should know what this is without another guess. Muscles. Muscles. Wheaties. You got it. Yeah, he's got it. Oh, that that female contestant looked pissed. Muscles. Wheaties. You got it. Look at her right there. Oh, mother. Thank you. You get to keep the two hundred dollars, and we have some nice gifts. gifts. Yeah, particularly with the timing of the show. This was '86, and that was the '84 Olympics, right? So that was like the most recent Olympics. So she was a household name. You already got the word flakes. Now, if you came out with just retin, but nothing like flakes, that could be a problem. But the combination. In fact, they should have just called Wheaties Retin Flakes. I think that's a better name. Yeah, why did they do it that way where she has to go first all the time? Phelps. I feel like everybody's already forgotten about Michael Phelps. You do all them bong hits. Straw, like it tastes like straw. Yeah, what about fiber? How about... How about IBS? Oh. Just wonderful. <laughs> Randy's won the game. You have five hundred dollars, and we'll be back to play the one-shot jackpot, where that jackpot today is worth twenty thousand dollars. And you're not going to win it. We don't have the budget to give away the jackpot. We're back with uh, Champ Randy, $500, and all of our celebrity oddballs. Now, all of them, all of them are going to try to help you win this $20,000 jackpot. I could use it. We're going to say goodbye <laughs> to you. Well, I shouldn't say that. We say so long okay. to you, okay? Go back Au revoir. To Close the doors. Celebrities, the jackpot subject is dribble. 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 Okay, so you can't say basket. You can't say basketball. Just say bounce. Bounce. Sport. Sport. Bounce. Those, those are my two goes, right there. I, -B -B -E. I mean, I guess like a tennis ball bounces and shit. But I think the normal person, when they think of a sport that has bouncing, they would go, uh, yeah, drills. Another one. That that would be the yeah the outside the box one to help tie the other ones together. Basketball is going to get repeated, but then again, I think another sort of reverse psychology thing is if a word is so incredibly obvious, maybe it would be worth doing because the other seven people are going to be like, well, I'm not going to go with that word because it's too obvious, and then you can sneak it in there. 
You see? I don't know. Dribble. I feel like this okay, show's got Nidra. some. St I feel like this show uh, could be good. I, I said okay, Nidra. Yeah, I heard okay, you okay. said nibbles there, but I the thought you said time wieners. Last time I, on weenies, while ago, I, I thought, thought I that's said what he said. I had Frankfurter on mine. And I, I thought he said weenies, and it wasn't weenies at all. <laughs> put Frankfurter up for weenies. <laughs> <laughs> will you put your? Will you finish writing? Put your light out, please. All right. Do not reveal your clues. Ding, okay. ding, ding. <laughs> all the celebrities have their lights on. Okay. This time we will not reveal the clues. The subject is dribble. What is the subject, audience? Dribble. You got it, Nidra? Right, just because you got a soundproof wall, which I think is a lie, doesn't mean you should have the entire studio audience scream out the goddamn answer. Okay. Let's open the doors and bring Randy back. You mean to tell me he didn't just hear like 100 people within 10 feet of him scream out the word dribble? That's what you mean to tell me. Dribble. What is the subject, audience? Dribble. He didn't hear that. He didn't hear that five seconds ago. Randy? I don't know. They open those doors real quick, and I don't see a sign of headphones or anything. <laughs> How did he do that? He ain't human. She has nice departing gifts. <laughs> All right, here's your chance to win $20,000. But you only get one shot at our jackpot subject. You only you get one shot. Do not miss your you chance want. to blow. This one opportunity comes time, once in a lifetime, yo. A if you get a clue that is a duplicate, you lose. All right, so be very, you very lose. careful when you decide to take that one shot. Okay. All right, which oddball do you want to pick first? You can might be, might be. Team. I'll take Marla Gibbs. Marla. Saliva. <laughs> that's one thing i enjoy with shows like this like in what other situation do you just like say with such a gumption saliva All right do you want to take your shot now or play on i think i'll uh is it uh take another clue <laughs> all right uh, how about dick martin Magic. <laughs> I don't know if I can guess anything off of magic saliva, but can somebody point me in the direction of a website with this, please? This, uh, saliva. Hey, what's up? Magic saliva. You want to take a shot or you want to play on? Magic saliva. I'm <laughs> magic saliva. <laughs> Yo, James. Yo, happy Turkey Day, man. There's only like a few minutes left. I'm going to take another clue. <laughs> Magic Johnson. <laughs> oh, shit. Robert Reed? I <laughs> uh, how about Vicky Lawrence? Smart man. Smart move, Randy. <laughs> I said bounce. See, that was my first word. Bounce, but it could get repeated. Bounce, saliva, magic. You want a shot or you want to play on? Bounce, saliva. I'll kind of take another clue. Okay. Um, pick, a, pick an oddball. How about Daniel? Daniel. Globetrotter. Globetrotter, magic. Okay, come on. Globetrotter immediately. I understand it's a term that existed before the Harlem Globetrotters. But your first inclination should be, okay, he's talking about the basketball team. So with that and bounce, that should be enough to get you to dribble. If he doesn't get it after this, and, and, uh, and by the way, I take it back. Falcon Crest Jamoke guy coming through in the clutch. Bounce, saliva for $20,000. You want to take a shot or play on just throw the word magic out. I think magic's going to throw him off because he's not going to think Magic Johnson. That was a bad clue. I've got to take another clue. You, come on, dude. Bounce? Globetrotter? All right. Pick an eyeball. With saliva? Anson? <laughs> Glass. Glass? Glass. Do you want to take a Glass shot?
Oh, dribble glass. But come on, that's like a that's like a novelty like gag gift thing. Nobody's no no the glass was stupid. Do you wanna play on? I'm gonna take another clue. I I I I agree with you, Marsha, but only on the the, the magic one. I, I think saliva is the perfect because I think with, with these kind of things you need that one clue that's like not a part of the others that sort of makes you think a little more outside the box you know what i mean i feel like a clue like hers can be the uh the catalyst for for getting it right or it could just throw you completely off and maybe that's what happened but magic definitely screwed things up <laughs> It doesn't seem like you would get a duplicate. I'm going to take Nidra. Nidra? Slobber. <laughs> Man. He's like, where do I get a copy of this movie? We got saliva. We got slobber. We got magic. It's James, I'm so happy you asked because you're almost right. Because I said the same thing before I corrected myself. She's the friend of the where's the beef lady from the movie Moving Violations. Along with being in other things around this time. But if you remember the movie Moving Violations starring Bill Murray's brother. Why is my back all wet? That's my favorite scene with her. She's blind, you see. She goes through the whole damn uh, trying to, what do you call those classes to learn how to drive again or whatever. But she's blind. And at one point she's in a man's bathroom and she's sitting on a urinal. <laughs> and dude walks in like, what are you doing? She's like, why is my back all wet? You're sitting in a urinal, lady. Globetrotter. Actually, these might actually be better clues for a harem than the harem clues. Glass. Do you want to take a shot because this is for twenty thousand yeah. dollars, or do you want to play on it? I knew we only have two left. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought I knew who it was originally, or what it was originally. It's a person, place, or thing. Obviously. I, I'm gonna live dangerously. I've got to take the Lydia. God, you thank you. Spit. Oh. <laughs> Holy shit. Man. We are going down a very specific uh, subgenre of Pornhub here. I don't know. I mean, I just feel like at this point, there's no way this guy is going to get it. He's already been thrown off by saliva and, and, and what, was, what did the old lady say? Spooge or something? <laughs> Slobber, bounce, spit, saliva. You know, I, I'm almost inclined to guess like Dr. Ruth. <laughs> like these are topics dr ruth might talk about i hope no one's I'm just a... tuning in <laughs> glass globe trotter magic do you want to take a shot or do you want to play on i can only ask you this one more time i don't know about you i sure as hell like to quit myself <laughs> I, I, how about one more all right one more what do you got there Tom? you can't miss your rule <laughs> I can't believe he didn't get a repeat. He's got all of the spit, drool, saliva, spooge. He's got it all covered. Uh, Katron, you missed one of the more nastiest. This is the nastiest, filthiest game show I've ever seen. Yeah, they all went there. 
And that's why the magic one's so stupid, because if you went basketball, pff, magic, what was he expecting someone else to just write Johnson for him or Lakers? He would have been better off just saying Lakers. At least he would have been like, okay, basketball, the Lakers, basketball, what's going on? But somebody said bounce, and somebody said globetrotters, and he should have... Like, you know what the Globetrotters are. They're a basketball team. You know what bouncing is. You know there's another word for it. Come on, man. Okay, now, wait a minute. All right, this, this is for $20,000. So we have magic. We have Globetrotter. We have drool. We have glass. We have slobber. We have bounce, spit, and saliva. We have this slobber. We have saliva. We have I drool. Have to make a guess. <laughs> This is this is the last. Let's room, give him one more. The last time. <laughs> Imagine. Um, say anything. Is it uh, Jenna Jameson? <laughs> Not even a guess, bro. Not even just, a guess. It could be okay. anything. Yes. Yeah, 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 well, okay. The the subject is dribble. Dribble was the subject. Some people went to basketball. Some people went someplace else. <laughs> but that's okay. You, you've got, you've got $500, and you'll be back to play with us tomorrow. I'm sure. We'll be back with more of our right after. Uh, that's kind of how it goes, James. I'm in everybody's head. That's it's all the referential humor, man. TV Stevie. That's what they called me growing up as a kid. I soaked all this in like Johnny Five from Short Circuit. I don't know. I have, I have no interpersonal skills. I'm 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 like uh, Jim Carrey and the Cable Guy. I only know how to communicate through game shows. <laughs> Slobber. <laughs> I cannot believe I just watched a game show bonus round where they emphasize words like spit, slobber, saliva. What else was on there? Shaft. Uh, rod. <laughs> oh, drool. I forgot drool. You're coming back with us tomorrow. The next time we play One Shot Jackpot, it's going to be worth $25,000. Thank you, Oddball ladies. Thank you, Oddball gentlemen. And thank you, audience. All right, so that's Oddballs. Until tomorrow, Jamie Farr for Oddball. You say until tomorrow, but this show, I think, was on for like five episodes or something. I ain't never heard of this. There's, I mean, this was the pilot, so it may not even gone past this. So that's, that's why I love some of the jokes in there where he's like, <laughs> are you really going to go for a seventh clue? I can't believe we've gotten this far. It's like, but this is the pilot. You have no idea kind of like what the regular outcome of this stuff is. Uh, number of seasons, two. Number of episodes, 20. Okay. They got in there. I made it to 20 episodes. What, what uh, network? Or was this? I can't, I don't see it popping up. This had to, uh, Netflix? What? Released in 2020. So this was a completely, like, f sitting in a, in, in a film canister somewhere. This, this is not the game. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Whoops. God damn it. Okay. Oddball's game show. How is there not a... Okay, game show wiki. Oddball. Jamie Farr. Okay, this is it. Does this tell us anything about how long it was on or anything? Rated PG. Yeah, okay, we're, we're, we're all good now. Like, he's naming all the people from the episode we just watched. Yeah, it aired on February 1st of 86, and it was just a pilot. Okay, so that makes sense. This is why I've never heard of this, 
And uh, yeah. For the production slate, the theme song from Final Jeopardy can be heard playing. I didn't hear that. The background prop intro for Oddball was also used for, from The Price is Right. So th they're just patching this thing together. And, and I again, why did they make the one a contestant go first every round? Why were they behind a door that clearly wasn't soundproof? Why was the guy from Falcon Crest there? There's a lot of questions. Oh yeah, man! I grew up during the 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 era, the golden era of Prices Right, man. The eighties, man. With with uh, can I still name the Barker's Beauties? What do you have? Janice, Diane, and Holly, right? Is that it? I got those names right. Janice, Diane, Holly. I bet you if I just put their three names together, boom, there they are. The legendary trio. I mean, it didn't get better. Which one did I which one did I have the hots for the most? Oh, everybody loved Plinko. I used to imagine Bob Barker like banging one of his beauties on the Plinko board. That was sort of how my 12-year-old mind worked. I'd like it'd be kind of kinky with all the spikes and stuff. But uh, I think most people liked Holly the most. The ginger. I guess because the other two were blonde and they were just sort of canceled each other out. I don't know. Bob Barker was a boss. And I know there's some stuff out there about his reported behavior on the show, you know, like, but it's the same damn story here about every single person during that era. I mean, it, it's like the show Mad Men. I don't know. Like, it's just that things were, just, were that way. And it's nothing to condone now, but it's also like, don't throw everybody under the bus for being a terrible person if they were just simply living in the times i mean i guess you could be a trailblazer and go hey enough of all this misogyny going on here well you know then suddenly uh you got all the other dudes uh turning on you you know <laughs> okay james uh yeah oh holly passed away in 2020 Oh. Wait. It doesn't show a passing away thing here. Why did it say obituary? She's alive. Why why did that pop up in my search? Anyway. All right, guys, uh what are we doing? I, th I think Rhino's, stopped. No, Rhino's still kicking it. Let me ask him how he's doing. How's the stream, man? I've been running your show in the background. Keep those watch times up. Oops. Uh, gosh, what was the other one on this list? The Diamond Head game that that predates me. I was born in seventy seven. How about the Awful Quiz Show? Okay, I guess that's the next one after this. Let's see what that's about. Oh, it was another Mark Goodson production. Hey, Thomas, it's going pretty good. Uh, I got I figured out how to fix my microphone now. Whenever the volume gets too low, so. Happy about that. And I was just checking in with Rhino over here. <laughs> we got to get Rhino to 1,200, Thomas. He's been sitting on 1,190-something for, for too long. This guy's working too hard. Let's help this dude out. He's been helping me. 
Yeah, Mark Goodson is. Uh, I mean, who's the bigger game show uh, brain than Mark Goodson, right? He's 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 kind of the guy. Uh, is that Ray Charles? What kind of set is this? What year is this? Eighty one. Okay, that looks about right for eighty one. Signify his friends through their body odor. Oh hell yeah. <clears throat> uh, Chuck Barris. <laughs> Did Richard Nixon ever contemplate a nose job? What? what? Food creates the most gas. <laughs> Learn the answers to these and other meaningful questions right now on that awful quiz show. Oh, this could be some serious cringe. What is this? Let me try and process what was supposed to be funny here again. Hold on a second. <laughs> ask it, uh, hey Vince, ask Rhino if he got that sweater on FlexPay. Can you ask him if, if, if he got that on FlexPay and how many easy payments was it? <laughs> Nixon ever contemplate a nose job? <laughs> what food creates the most gas? <laughs> Look how poorly lit this is. It's it's God. It's like a five year old drawing. Can't even see it. Like what are we supposed to even like? What is he doing to her? Learn the answers to these and other meaningful questions right now on that awful good show. Now from Hollywood, a town where the moral majority is a minority, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. Would they get the illustrator from Mad Magazine to help out with this? Gentlemen, here are your hosts. What's going on, Rhino? Hey, man. Would you end your stream? Oh, man. Look at this. I'm just staring at nothing. You're over here now. Rhino, you're on my stream that I just. Didn't, I just did on a on a whim with no plans or anything and it's Thanksgiving and you still found that found the time to do some streaming and then come on over here and say hello this guy's salt of the earth people I don't know I don't know about you but this rhino guy is salt of the friggin earth all right taking a short walk to the podium John and Greg Rice <laughs> Oh, James, can you help out Rhino and get his sub count up? Uh, just go to Rising Rhino on your, uh, here, I'll, I'll hook you up. Let me hook you up. Yeah, because Rhino here has probably helped me out with, I'd say, anywhere from a dozen to two dozen uh, members, you know. So I'm doing whatever I can to repay the favor. And, uh, where is it? Right there. Here. Here's the link. Head on over here, James, and then come right on back after you've subbed. There. You got it, James? And don't worry. He's harmless. <laughs> All right. Uh. The Awful Trivia Show. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, this might be just too problematic. This whole show might be just too problematic. I mean, they started off with like a photo of Ray Charles and they were making fart noises. And then there was like an illustration of like some Harvey Weinstein looking dude like assaulting some woman now we've now we've got this yeah this 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 does reek of chuck barris at this point especially like the horn music and everything oh and they gotta awkwardly get up these stairs oh god why was Warwick Davis booked? What happened? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'm John. And I'm Greg. How do you like these new suits? Nice, huh? Hey, Rhino. I, I get your joke. Uh, low bar here. Rhino. Uh, 81, I think. Yeah, 1981. 
Um, these goofy illustrations. Everything's just supposed to be goofy and a laugh riot. These are definitely not Ken and Barbie hand-me-downs. <laughs> this week, Greg and I went shopping, and one of the places we ended up was a Tall and Big Man shop. This guy came over to us and said, what do you got? Oh, that pun That pun was, uh, come on, D- Rhino, come on, you, 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 come on. He's doing here. I looked up and said, <laughs> just setting goals, setting goals. <laughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry, I, I meant to turn my head from the microphone, we sorry. Right now to bring you a really terrific show with some great guests. We'll be right back after these words to meet a game show junkie. Wait a minute. They're the hosts? I thought they were just like the sidekick comedic, like, side guys. These are the hosts? All right. Maybe this is a little more uh, progressive than I originally gave it credit for. An animal psychologist. We'll be right back after this. Rice Brothers, shortest twins. Two subs from, oh, you got two more. Okay, come on. Calling all cars. Calling all cars. DDH. Have you helped out here already? I feel like most people in here are already Rhino uh, subscribers. Melinda, you still floating around? Katron, you still floating around? Maria, you still floating around? Get on over there. Come on. To hit a milestone on, on a holiday? Yeah, Steel, I, I, I met you over there before, so I figured you're, you're good. I, I swear, more. this is what I'm saying. This is why Rhino needs to get paid back. I think more people here are Rhino suburbs than non-Rhino suburbs. Hello again. Hello again. Welcome back to the show. Huh? Could we introduce our first two guests, please? John and Greg, I'd like you to meet a student who calls himself a game show junkie and a woman who is an animal psychologist. Say hello to Bob Bowden and Beatrice Slidecker. Beatrice Slidecker? Why did you bring... Is this one of those, uh, what do you call it, animals? Like, like you bring on planes or whatever? Like she has to have this? Beatrice, Bob, welcome. Right. Beatrice, how long? Oh, hey, Danielle. You, you have, okay, Danielle's going to sub. Here's the deal. And Rhino, it's okay to say this, right? Because I would say this to people, vice versa. Like, you can sub and, like, not hit the notification bell if you want. That way you can help out the channel in case the content isn't necessarily for you. So, Danielle, if you like sports, sub and get notified. If you don't really care about sports, go ahead and sub anyway. Help out my, my friend Rhino here. And But you don't have to get the notifications. That way you don't have to go, okay, the there's a hockey game on I could care less about. you know. But you can still... I'll help, I'll help them out. So would you head on over there? Here. Is that still yeah, control pasted? Daniel, help my boy out here. We're, he's like one away. He's one away from a milestone. How long have you been an animal psychologist? About 12 years. Do you talk to your animals and do they talk to you back? Absolutely. Hey, I was talking to a, a cat one day and I asked him why. <laughs> this cat got real mad. The lady was laying on the couch talking to uh, her, the cat's former owner on the phone. Cat went over and peed all over her head. <laughs> this, people are laughing like they've never heard a story like this ever. It's just like, uh, I got a cat and it peed on my friend's head. <laughs> real mad the lady was laying on the couch talking to uh, her the cat's former owner on the phone cat went over and peed all over her head <laughs> and what, what, what did you tell her to do scotch guard her hair no <laughs> i uh, asked the cat why he did it he said i'm mad she's talking to my former owner they both say i should live inside i want to go out and sit on the back fence and talk to the other cats and she won't let me out which animals are most that's what the cat said to you 
I'm uncomfortable. Neurotic. I think poodles, because I had this lady came to me one time with a little tiny teacup poodle, and I asked her what his problem was. She said, well, he's wet all over my house. He's done about $5,000 worth of damage. And I said, you mean to tell me you've still got him in your house? She said, well, I just can't discipline that poor little thing. I might hurt him. Tell the lady. I told her to put a diaper on him. Or Scotch guard the furniture? <laughs> He made a Scotch guard joke twice. Did you get there, Rhino? Did you get there, buddy? Hold on. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, courtesy of my help, Rising Rhino has risen even farther. 1,200 subs. Get in. Happy freaking Turkey Day. Come on, people. Hi, Kiva. Hi. News. 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 <laughs> All right, let me get out of here before it messes up my microphone again. I love it. I love it. I did my part. I, I pulled together to find some folks. And guys, seriously, this is what it's all about, man. We're, we're a couple of guys who clearly are uh, dedicated to, to making something out of YouTube, right? We're putting in the work on a daily basis. We can't get enough of it, right? And we're and we're and we're 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 we're, help, we're helping each other out. It's great. Like, this is how like society should work, right? I don't know. Are women pet owners more inclined to bring their animals to you than men? Yeah, but uh, the ones I have the most problems with are men. I don't know why, but these guys are all. Uh, are we gonna get to a game show? They're at, they're going in for like a third anecdote. Normally, I complain when I watch a game show where it's like it says here that you like to blah blah blah, and they're like, "That's right, Johnny." I uh, and then like a three second anecdote. It's like, all right, well, it's good to have you. Here's Larry now. This one, they're like, we got nothing to do. Let let the people just talk. They're all afraid the dog's going to tell what's going on in the bedroom and they don't want me to come and see them. Like scotch guarding the sheets? Three times. Three times. I would give them two just because there's two of them, I guess. I, I, I would I would have given them the pass on repeating a joke twice. Three times. Three anecdotes. Three Scotch guard punchlines. I hate this show. I hate this. I hate this show. Why do you call yourself a game show junkie? I've watched thousands of them on TV. I've I've been to the tapings of hundreds of them. In Have the you studio. ever been on a game show? I was on the dating game. <laughs> did you get the girl? Oh, by the way, did I? I forgot to show you guys this. I got a really nice comment this morning. 
on uh what do you call it uh thanksgiving uh morning uh doug 9437 asks hi could you upload a version of this without you talking <laughs> uh, boy i tell you what this whole youtube business no um Steve, does it never get dark in Thailand? No, never. I live right on the the equator and the and the prime meridian, right, right, right on that cross section. And so the sun just. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, man, it's pretty uh pretty cut and dry. It gets dark somewhere between six to seven o'clock every night. It doesn't get. You know, it's not like, uh, like say when I grew up in DC where in the summer it could get dark, like 9 PM here. It's, it's always dark by seven and maybe as early as six, like the window of, you know what I'm saying is, is smaller, but I didn't, but I think I came out ahead because I won three cases of motor oil. <laughs> and, uh... Well, I guess if you didn't, wait, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm missing all the humor here. There's a lot of humor going on, and I'm missing it. The girl? No, I didn't, but I think I came out ahead because I won three cases of motor oil. <laughs> and, uh, well, I guess if you didn't if get a you, date, you'd have plenty of time to change your oil in your car. Well, she was a real dipstick, yeah. let me tell you. Oh, good. <laughs> and you know, you, you know what I'm 100% convinced of? This is all scripted. The Scotch guard jokes, the even for the contestant, she's a dipstick, let me tell you. This is all this is scripted awful humor. This is so bad. Well, tell me, do you think that being on so many game shows has affected your life in any way? Well, I guess it has. Uh... I covered my wall of my dorm room with TV tickets. I carry a little portable bell with me, and uh, I find myself uh, using it. This in... has to be Chuck Barris. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, James. Yes. That's... Yes. I remember the first time I heard the name of this city and uh, when I was like 10, and I got a big bang out of it. <laughs> uh, what is this called? The Awful Quiz Show in 1981. Let me do a little. Uh, someone named. Oh, you already looked it up, Marsha. N so no Chuck Barris involvement. Well, clearly this guy is just trying to r ride the Chuck Barris train with this kind of idea. In uh, different situations to uh, talk about game show cliches, like say I'm overhearing a conversation and one guy will say to the next guy, what time did you get up this morning? The other guy will say seven o'clock. I'll go, ding, that's a right answer. <laughs> or, uh, or say somebody. Neither one of these are Warwick Davis. Stop. Just because they're of this height doesn't mean they're Warwick Davis. It doesn't mean they're Billy Barty. It doesn't mean they're uh, the black one from the Bad Santa movies whose name I can't remember. Doesn't mean it's Peter Dinklage. <laughs> These are the Rice brothers, okay? You got Jerry Rice and Larry Rice, okay? And Jerry, of course, was uh, the all-time leading wide receiver in the NFL. Not many people know that. Somebody, uh, let's say someone comes up to me and says, oh, would you like to go out with my sister next Friday night? Well, I'll say, oh, no, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. But I, I will take what's behind door number three. <laughs> Who's your favorite game show? <laughs> and we all know door number three means the balloon knot. Right, guys? <laughs> we all know which that door that is. Well, my favorite game show is uh, Jeopardy. And... Uh, so my favorite host would have to be Art Fleming. Well, who's your favorite announcer? Well, the announcer of Jeopardy, Don Pardo. Who else? Sorry about that. Wait, oh, I'm sorry. He's he's winding up for a joke, and what, he's doing this a lot. Where like he delivers a joke while like looking up to what I don't know. And it's so weird how the two they almost seem conjoined. I, I'd be, I'd be more impressed if they were conjoined, to be honest.
that, Hal. Right, I, I want to get this well, punchline. Well, the announcer of Jeopardy, Don Pardo. Who else? Sorry about that, Hal. <laughs> sorry, Hal. Oh, sorry to the announcer of this show. I see. Okay, that's fine. Can you do an impression of Don Pardo? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's sure, hear I do some. that all the time. Let's hear some. Well, some of our contestants receive a generous supply of rice cerrone, the big flavor side dish. It's so quick, so easy. The one you saw takes a little bit of perfection. Try rice. Your Don Pardo stinks. Here's Don Pardo. <clears throat> it's Saturday Night Live with Dana Carvey. Nora Dunn, Jan Hooks, Kevin Nealon, Rob Schneider, David Spade, Adam Sandler, Julia Sweeney. That's Don Pardo. Come on. Excuse me, Bob. Hal said that's wonderful. Uh, now, now it's time for you okay. to make your second appearance on a game show. Okay. Hopefully, you'll end up with more than a case of motor oil, though. I hope so. As a team, you'll start out with $500. Oh, are we actually now getting to the point of this affair? They've, they've killed a third of the runtime. Now, now it's time to get down to business. I, I'm willing to bet you there is a grand total of like two minutes of actual game in this game show. Am I at 19 likes? Okay, well, somebody's got to come through. If uh, Rhino's going to hit a milestone, uh, you know, come on. 17. Oh, I'll never get to 20. I could I could just keep streaming until uh, New uh, Christmas Eve. How you'll about be asked that? four questions. Each question you'll be able to bet between 50 and $200 per question. Remember, you'll only have eight seconds to come up with your answer. And if you're the lucky contestants that have the most money at the end of the show, you'll be invited back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus awful question that's sent in by a viewer. All right. And your first... A shot at a question sent in by a viewer? First question has to do... First of all, this show couldn't have lasted more than two and a half episodes. All right. So where are they getting these at-home viewer questions from so quickly from the jump? And secondly... I wouldn't even, this is the kind of show if I got on it and it's like, well, you can risk it and come back and try to go for, no, I'm like, no, I'll take what I won today and I'm leaving. I'm leaving now because <coughs> I, I, I don't think this show is going to last more than another episode or two. And I don't want to risk losing what I got already. You guys might have some like, uh, you know, loophole or since uh, you're canceling the show, you're not going to give me my, my prize. Yeah, give me my stuff. With animals, how much would you care to bet? Let's go for all. Okay. Two hundred. For two hundred dollars. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting, DDH. Cause yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to eat the edible on a mostly empty stomach, right? You're wasting your time eating the the, the leftovers and then eating the edible. So you got the order right. I would just play by ear. You eat the edible and then let your appetite figure it out from there because you never really know. One country recently spent $60,000 to study why some male frogs become homosexual. <laughs> this sounds like the kind of topic that like Marjorie Taylor Greene brings up like on the floor of Congress. You know, some tax money is being used to test whether frogs are homosexual and they're using space lasers. What the hell first question out of the gate is this? Okay. 200. For $200, one country recently spent $60,000 to study why some male frogs become homosexual. <laughs> First of all, it has to be said, spending $60,000 on any sort of research for anything as a country is, 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 is no money. 
that's the cost of like the prime minister's like fucking uh like lazy boy recliner that he's sitting in all right do we have an actual like sweden is an actual guess or do you actually is this knowledge if i had to guess all right you got to have more money than you know what the than i'm mean, like i'm saying it's cheap but at the same time like what are you doing why do you need to know this you're going sweet i'm gonna go south america i'm gonna go south america on this one i'm gonna go brazil i'm gonna go brazil on this yeah. <laughs> what's that country poland oh wait wait oh i didn't realize there was multiple choice poland oh my, oh my god if they make like a like a Polak joke thing oh no <laughs> the United States. Oh, God, France, France. I God. I think Poland's in there just for the joke. I think that, or maybe that's it. Maybe they found some obscure joke that ties in with Poland so they can make a bunch of Polish jokes. It's hard to tell. Uh, whatever the lowest hanging fruit of this situation is. B, acid dog, acid dog, B. You sure? Absolutely sure? You sure? All right. Oh, wait, they're working together as a team? I thought they were... Con- I, 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 I'm just now figuring this out. I think it was the U.S. paid it. That's exactly right. According to Senator William Fox, my All right, all right. According to Senator William who? I mean, I'd like to actually know who the hell... That's exactly right. According to Senator William Fox, all right. I love it. I love how they step all over the actual information. Because I would look this guy up and see what the hell this was. William Proxmire? Did you hear that or do you just know who he is? Uh, Frogs. Huh. This, this is all stuff from like 2017. This is clearly not duck genitals. <laughs> I, I had no plan on reading that out loud. Today or any day in my life, did I have a plan to just blurt out duck genitals into a microphone? <laughs> All right, never mind. I don't need to go. I, let's just. The United States recently spent over $60,000 on that project. Ribbit, Bruce. <laughs> This is almost like TikTok, the game show. It's that's how obnoxious and like short attention span and lowest common denominator and like visual noise. It, it's just how Bob said that's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Okay, now you have seven hundred dollars, and your next category has to do with the. Okay, you now have seven hundred dollars, and your next category. Five senses. Four senses. Uh-oh. The five senses. Maybe four, four. Right? four senses. Oh, four senses. Okay, how much would you care to bet? Two hundred. For two hundred dollars, which one of these famous blind people said That's a low blow? Have you been watching this show? I I I it's impossible for me to take a higher road than the road I'm on. Their road is so fucking low, I can't help but be on 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 the Grand Canyon ledge looking down at them. This is fucking ridiculous, man. That they can identify their friends by their body odors. Was it Ray Charles? <laughs> no. Why Ray Charles? No. George Shear. Stevie Wonder. Ray, Helen Keller. Or a little... You can't put Helen Keller into a comedy trivia show. You can't. 
And it's not even like a too soon joke. It's just, come on, man. Yes, Helen Keller jokes have been a part of the American lexicon or whatever, like forever. <laughs> All right, South Park, yeah, you know. Oh, oh, I know, Marsha, believe me. And and even, I mean, for, for, for generations it's been, but you can't put a spotlight on it on a TV show. You know what I'm saying? It's still a person. <laughs> I don't know. Stevie Wonder. And then everyone's just laughing at every photo of every blind person they post. This is so gross. Oh, how'd that go, Vince? <laughs> he got any good... <laughs> he got any good Helen Keller jokes? Who was it? <laughs> and by the way, like, like, you know, again, I'm not trying to act like I'm on a soapbox or whatever here. Like, make all the Helen Keller jokes you want. I might make one. I'm su I'm just saying for national broadcast, it's it seems a little uh, tasteless. I don't know. That's exactly right. That was it. Whoa! And it's the answer. <laughs> now, are they going to follow it up with uh, like a tag joke? Th th that is true, Marsha. You're absolutely right. They did not. They did not mislead anybody with uh, their marketing of the show. <laughs> Wait, sniff, sniff. Oh, that's you, Annie. Oh my, wait, so this is like a cartoony, like, oh, from your sniffing, I, 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 I can figure out that that's you. This is really m messed up. Question stinks, so really go. That gives you $900, and you still have two questions left. Your next question deals with quotations. How much will you... Okay, your, your next question has to do with Stephen Hawking, Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's going to be something. Your next, uh, bet. 200. For $200, which American president said, things are more like they are today than they've ever been before? Sounds like. Well, this guy's, look how quickly this guy's interjecting with a, a pre-scripted joke. The guy didn't even finish reading the question. The American president said, things are more like they are today than they've ever been before. Sounds like all of them. Sure does. <laughs> like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a comedic, like, one-liner processed in your mind. Like, like it's, it's, they can't even time it to where it might seem like they're funny people coming up with this. It's just... What what happened? What happened, Marsha? What's wrong? It's not, it's not Truman. Was that President Calvin Coolidge, Dwight Eisenhower, Lyndon Johnson, or Jimmy Carter? Who was? Uh, I would guess Carter, just because everyone thought he was like stupid, even though he was really probably the most like decent person to be president in my lifetime. are more like they are now than they've ever been before. <laughs> Aren't they? <laughs> Calvin Coolidge. I'm sorry, but that was said by Dwight Eisenhower in a press conference in the mid-50s. You what have... You ah, that was Ike. You have $700. This is your last question. Your last category deals with diet. How much will you bet? Okay. All right, $200. All right. For $200, who said... Never eat anything that you can't lift. <laughs> oh, there'll be multiple choice. Anybody know this right off just from that? Never eat anything you can't lift. I mean, that sounds like a Mark Twain kind of thing, but I don't know. Twain usually says something a little better than that. Was, oh, let's see. Was it Orson Welles, <laughs> Miss Piggy, Kate Smith, or Linda Lovelace? What? What kind of <laughs> folks did you ever imagine seeing these four 
people or character, whatever. These four in, in, in a group together for any reason. <laughs> In honor of B, we'll say Miss Piggy. Yes, that's exactly correct. That advice. Whoa! Miss Piggy. No, Sanj, I'm sorry. You got that mistaken for Orson's quote. Ha <laughs> The French. Uh, from the famous vineyards of southern France. There's a chateau that is uh, called Le Fosse Fion. And the French... Uh, does she do anything? La ha ha, the French are known for their excellence. I wonder if Kermit weighs more than. Oh, I guess I'm. It's it's midnight, guys. Uh, God, you guys are hanging or what? What the hell? It's midnight Thanksgiving night, and I've got like a decent crowd here. I don't get it. You guys are animals. Should I wrap up the stream? You guys ready to pack it up? Then again, it is a uh, hanging out. Just hanging out. Hanging out with my home is having ourselves a party. Just hanging out. Hanging out. Come on, name the movie, y'all. Hanging out with my home is having ourselves a party. Yeah. We're just hanging out. We got no Birdemic fans here. We got no Birdemic fans. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Marsha. Perfect. Be the one knowledgeable enough to answer, but also correct me at the same time. No, I mean, you know, that's just it's fantastic. Nobody even knows what I'm talking about, but let just make sure that they understand the right lyrics just in case they might get confused or watch it later and wonder why I said homies and <laughs> all right. So we'll hang out for a little bit longer. If you guys are splitting, thanks for hanging tonight. Uh, I'll probably just try to get to the end of this game show. I might not make it, but if I do get to the end, that'll definitely be the end. All right. Than I do. <laughs> well, you've ended up with $900. And if you have that's, more money than right, the other contestants true. at the end of the show, we'll invite you back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus night. awful question. In the meantime, thanks for being here. You've been great. We'll be right back with more of that awful quiz show after this. It's a terrible show. Are you out to uh, DDH? I can't tell if people are saying goodnight to each other or to me. I don't know. John and Greg, they're a woman who collects celebrity garbage and a man who's the world's fastest beer drinker. Say hello to Bill. World's fastest what? I heard Erberker. What, what is it? Er celebrity garbage and a man who's the world's fastest beer drinker. Oh, oh, beer drinker. God, what a terrible announcer. World's fastest beer drinker. Say hello to Bill the Fox Foster and Edna Looney, will you? Say hello to Bill Foster and Larry the Cable Guy. <laughs> this is the world's fastest beer drinker? <laughs> Come on, man. She looks like uh, Olivia Spencer or, or Octavia Spencer. Then she a little bit, or is it just racist for me to say that? I don't know. Edna, so you collect celebrity garbage, huh? Yes, but I don't call it garbage. I call it antique. <laughs> so what I mean is, before you turn them into antiques, you get them out of the garbage can, right? Yes, I get everything out of the trash. Well, Edna, Edna, when when you were a little girl growing you up, you were like, little. I was never little. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, and I didn't mean to say that. What I mean is, you know, I did mean. What I'm trying to say is, did you ever think one day you'd grow up to 
to pick celebrity garbage? Yes, anybody can get Doris Day's picture, but no one can get Doris Day flea collar. Doris Day was a flea collar? Do Doris Day's what? Meat card? I can't understand. <laughs> I'm having trouble understanding. Doris Day's picture, but no one can get Doris Day flea collar. Doris Day was... What is it? And why is he dressed like he plays for the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1908? Anybody can get Doris Day's picture, but no one can get Doris Day flea collar. Doris Day was... I didn't hear flea collar. I didn't hear the in, the fl. If anything, it was like a knee. Knee car or I don't know. Collar. Doris Day dog wear flea collar. <laughs> oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I take it back. That's on me. I'll take the L on that one. She said flea collar. Wow. Good good ears, guys. Whew. Right. You actually have one of Doris Day's <laughs> yes, dogs. Yes, I collar. have a few of them right here. In my bag. <laughs> That's celebrity garbage? Yes. I swear, when I saw you come on the stage this afternoon, I didn't say anything, but I thought you'd been to pick and save. <laughs> drop your groceries. No, I wouldn't bring no groceries on no TV show. Well, you bring your... All right, I finished sipping my morning latte, and now it's officially afternoon. Hey, does anybody know if this exists in the United States, this this uh, brand of uh, energy drink called uh, G-Beat? I just bought this today. It's got some Thai script on there, if you can see it. I don't know. So I don't know if this is a Thai thing or uh, what. But Thailand is the original home of, of Red Bull, if you didn't know that. The non-carbonated version of Red Bull that you can buy here still for like 30 cents instead of paying 4 or $5 for just for some carbonation. Uh, but yeah, I'm about, I'm about to test it. This is this is a YouTube type channel thing, right? Where people like open up and test something for the first time. This is G Beat Peach and Plum Energy Drink. Uh, it has natural caffeine, vitamin A from Switzerland. Okay, let's give it a whirl. I don't think I've ever drank anything out of a pink can before. All right, here we go. That's pretty fucking good. A little bit of a bitter aftertaste, a little bit. A little bit, but not bad. But the biggest thing for me is like I hate a syrupy tasting drink. I don't care if it, I don't care what you're talking about that's why i hardly ever drink soda because it's completely syrupy but even like some energy drinks are syrupy i don't know I, I just as long as it doesn't have that syrup drip i'm fine and this this is lighter i like it it's good your garbage that's not garbage that's antique <laughs> what else have you got in that bag i got this ketchup bottle from vincent price <laughs> what what else have you got in that bag I got this ketchup bottle. But it says vinegar. This looks like the bottle that the Damon Wayans character from In Living Color, the homeless guy, would be carrying around with his pickle in, in a pea jar. What? What is this? Bottle from Vincent Price. <laughs> and I got a bunch of bras, 43 of them. Vincent Price's bra? <laughs> What's the best time to go out and look for your treasures? The best time is to watch the paper and watch the week when they're getting a divorce. The week that they're getting a divorce. That's kind of funny. I actually believe her on that. First of all, I totally believe there's people who go out and sift through celebrity trash. That's a thing. Secondly, she's making total sense. Hey, Katron, did you... Uh, oh, we did hit the... Uh, we hit the uh, milestone, but still, Katron, if you haven't signed up to Rising Rhino's uh, YouTube channel, hook them up. But yeah, we helped them get the 1200 tonight. It's good stuff. Uh, I forgot what my other point was about. Oh, oh, that last point she made, I totally believe that they keep track of celebrity divorces and shit and, and go like, okay, there's, there's going to be a haul here. All right. 
Why aren't you playing? It's just not playing. I th I think uh, I think this video has had enough. All right, let me close some stuff. Maybe I got too many tabs open. I don't know. All right, they're back, but now I can't hear them. What the hell's going on? Hello. Uh, this might be the end of the stream coming here, folks. I don't know what's going on. Uh, oh, that's them. But again, there's no sound. What the hell happened? All right, let me just hit refresh. And if that doesn't work, we'll call it a night. Yeah. How did it refresh me way the hell back here? You got to be kidding me. All right. All right, here we go. Right about here. We haven't heard from this guy yet. <laughs> ah! Was that President Calvin Coolidge? Do I all right, we heard that. Oh, wait, how did we get all the way back here? Come on. Uh, right about, just get to the part where she holds up the jar. All right. The divorce, you can find some very interesting things in the trash. The week that Debbie Reno and Eddie Fisher got a divorce, I okay. found six albums. Doors Day? <laughs> Who's garbage right here? Is this in his picture? Oh, I got John Barber. I was looking in his trash. Let me find a John Barber's trash. A, I found an eight incredible T-shirt. <laughs> well, let me ask you, Bill, as the world's fastest beer drinker, have you ever set any records? Yes, I have. I think that might qualify as the stupidest question I've ever heard in my life. They say there's no such thing as a stupid question. But if you're the world's anything, anything, anythingiest, by, by pure necessity, you have to have a record. That's how you're the world's whatever, whatever. What the fuck kind of question is that? Being the world's fastest drinker, have you ever broken any records? Is, if he's going to come back with, yeah, I smashed an ELO album on my record player like, like Donna Reed and It's a Wonderful Life. Oh, not that kind of. Ah, ha, see, I made a joke. Yeah, I set a record. I drank two jugs to uh, one person's one. When did you when did you do that? I did that uh, last Friday night, last Saturday night. I'm going to do it again this coming Friday and Saturday. Where do you do this at? I run a place in Santa Monica called the Fox Inn. I uh, drink beer and play the piano there. When did you, you discover see? that you had this secret talent? I, I When did you discover you had that hat on your head? <laughs> when did you discover you look like Honus Wagner with Jeffrey Dahmer glasses. That is exactly what he's got. This is Jeffrey Dahmer cosplaying as Honus Wagner. Like, hook me up with a, with a Honus. And, yeah, here we go. Here's Honus. With his pirate's outfit. I started this one night when I short on customers and I had a lot of beer left over, so I just <laughs> fell right into it. What's the most beer you've ever drunk in a night? Well, I don't. I think counting's a sign of weakness, but two <laughs> customers counted 28, so I drank two more jugs just to show class. Boy, oh, drinking must have really been slow that night, huh? Yeah. How many years have you been... Katron, you're, you're, you're like live, right? You're not like behind on the stream? You got the little red dot next to the word live there in the this part of the thing? I just felt like your comments felt like they were like coming in late. Just checking. Have you been doing this sort of over, thing? Over 15 years. That's over 45,000 jugs. That's a lot of beer. Yes, it is. Well, would you give us a demonstration of this ability? Oh, the way you responded makes me think it's not a big deal. But anyway, it has been a fun night, and we're almost done. All right. Do you have here this talent? 
Yes, if you have a couple of jugs, I'll... Okay, Laura, bring out the jugs. <laughs> okay. Oh, bring out the jug. First of all, no one would ever call beer in these sort of glasses jugs. There's nothing jug-like about these beer glasses. You're, you're just talking about our cans. And it's just a joke about here comes the jugs. God, this is just the lowest. And, and no pun intended for these two, but this is the lowest <laughs> form of comedy I've ever seen for like national broadcast. Bring out the jugs. Bring out the jugs. Okay. There you go. Okay, Bill Lord has two jugs over a pint each. Ah, uh, shame, shame, shame. You know what I always found, found weird about, like, what, like this has got to be early 80s. Yeah, right? Uh, so, yeah, I remember, like, watching movies from this era. And there would always, you know, if it was, like, you know, a teen sex romp or some sex comedy type movie, you'd always have some lady like this with no real part. It was just to be there for this. And I always, even then, I always wonder, like, why do they always have this big, like, poodle shag haircut? Where, like, you can't even see their face most of the time. Like, you're trying to get known. We need, I mean, yeah, nice rack and all, but can we... We'll time it. Wait a minute. We'll time it. Can we get a, a glimpse yeah. of your face? As soon as you take your first we can't even see you. Go ahead. Okay. We, I do a chant with this. It's called Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. Tiki Taki Tiki Taki Hoi Hoi Hoi. <laughs> All right, that's pretty impressive. But man, how do you nurse a beer with this guy? You know? Normally when I'm out drinking, like I'm doing my best to nurse because I'm out late and not, a, you know, I can only hold so much of this stuff. And it's not even about getting too drunk. It's like, I just hate having to take a leak every 15 minutes. And it's not just like a leak. It's like a, you know, a full balloon leak I'm, every 15 minutes. Thank you very much, Laura. Thank, Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Three seconds. That's fantastic. What does Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy mean? Sounds like German for where's the men's room. <laughs> Bill, Edna, it's been great talking. What? Do I want to go back and even try to understand what he meant there? I heard German and Israel in the same sentence. And I'm not sure if I want to even try to figure out what that was. But I'm I'm morbidly curious. Three seconds. That's fantastic. What does Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy, Ziggy Zaggy mean? Sounds like German for where's the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Edna, it's been great talking to you, but now... Oh, German for... Oh. I thought he said... Okay, I'm losing my mind. I'm sorry. I need a wrap-up. Let's see if we can't win some money playing that awful quiz. As a team, you'll have $500 to start. You'll be asked four questions. You'll be able to bet between $50 and $200 a question. All right, let's you'll hurry. Let's, let's, let's go. I'll stop pausing. Answer. Let's just get show, through this. You end up with more money than the other guests. <laughs> you'll come back for a shot at that $1,000 bonus off a question sent in by a viewer. Your first category happens to do with food. How much will you bet? 200 All right. Okay. How much? 200 For $200, which of the following foods creates the most gas? <laughs> Can you believe they went there, guys? All right, you think it's all going to be different kinds of beans? Because I'll tell you right now, baked beans, man. Lima beans, pinto beans, soybeans, or peanuts? Pinto beans, soybeans, or peanuts? <sighs> Most gas. I guess I don't eat enough of any of these. Well, I mean, I, I probably eat a lot of peanuts, I guess. You think it's soy? Oh, yeah, soy, because, like, soy-based stuff and, like, veggie heads. They've always got the bad farts. Yeah, soybeans. That's a good... I'm not saying you're guessing. Maybe you know, but I think soy's right. Peanuts. <laughs> God, do you hear this one guy laughing like... He's about to have a heart attack. 
much. I say, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. That's got to be the producer. We've de uh, decided on pinto bean. <laughs> okay, John said the same. It's got to be the producer, just desperate to create an atmosphere of fun. I'm sorry, but according to the United States Department of Agriculture, they blame soybeans. Soybeans! Yeah, so, soy, soy products, man. Yeah, I'm telling you. You know, you ever date a chick that just had... Everything soy, they cut a lot of gassers, man. Just saying. Hashtag soybean farts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? what? There's just a belch sound effect? Yo, I was probably watching You Can't Do That on Television at this age. And little did I know, little being the, the key word, I was watching like higher, like more elevated comedy than apparently what my, what my parents were watching. Cause this is absolute garbage. This this is. They blame soybeans. Your next guy. Listen to that one guy. I mean, is he next to like a a, a, a carbon? Uh, what do you call it? What's the laughing gas? Is he is he just doing whippets in the crowd? Who's doing whippets in the crowd? <laughs> yeah, nit nitrous oxide. Thank you. Your next category might be a little better. It deals with Richard Nixon, who some people think beats out soybeans. How much will you bet for Richard Nixon? How much will you bet on a trivia question about farts and Nixon? <laughs> like, what, what are we doing here? Like, they're supposed to sit there and, like, like come up with a strategy of what to bet. Like, any of this, like, they don't know what the hell's coming. Bet $22. As we can bet on him. The highest you can bet is two hundred. Okay. We'll go a hundred. <laughs> that that in itself is a joke. Hey, you guys, you gotta make a bet now. Uh, what can we bet? Uh, the highest you can go is two hundred. Uh, we'll go one hundred. <laughs> Holy shit. For $100, in 1954, then Vice President Richard Nixon <laughs> wrote a note to his wife, Pat, and said one of the following. President Eisenhower should be impeached. <laughs> I'll never run for public office again. Or I'm going to have a nose job and an operation to remove my sweat glands. First of all, I'm like 99% sure it's this one in the middle. I feel like I've read that somewhere before. Second of all, this is the stupidest f fucking joke attempt I've ever read in my life. Am ever in my life. I never use superlatives like that or whatever, right? Which was it? It, it was why I was vice president. Like, uh, like uh, I can't remember. I can't remember what year. Ahead, Late 50s. I, I'm pretty sure it's I'll never run again. That's exactly correct. In 1954, according to the Yay. I'm glad I'm on the same intellectual level of, as this guy. Well, she she really looks thrilled to have to get the winning answer. Can you contain your excitement, please, lady that just won something? Here. Nixon promised his wife Pat that he would never run for public office again. I guess he lied to his family too. <laughs> you now have four hundred dollars and two more questions. 
Yeah, she is prob she's probably jealous that she doesn't get to get drunk during the, the taping. That's gotta be pretty cool. You get to go on a game show and like they're like, all right, you can get on the game show, but you gotta do that thing where you drink a lot of beer really fast. <laughs> okay. And your next question has to do with relationships. How much would you care to bet for relationships? I'm good on those. Yeah, let's vote $200 on that relationship. For $200, which of these people said that whenever I'm alone with a beautiful woman, the devil in me becomes dangerous? Uh, every male uh, heterosexual actor from 1920 to 1998? I think the better question would be who, what, who didn't say this? People said that whenever I'm alone with a beautiful woman, the devil in me becomes dangerous. Was it Roman Polanski, <laughs> Jimmy Carter, <laughs> Tiny Tim, <laughs> or Billy Jean King? Clearly it's Polanski. These joke guesses are offensive. <laughs> that that should be yeah. Everyone should feel the way they're feeling in the crowd right now. As in, oh my God, why am I here? This this is sad. You say you know. I know, I know. You got to think of our host. It's tiny. Tiny Tim. That's exactly correct. That was a confession. That was Tiny Tim. God Tiny damn it. Tim. You now have $600. Your final... I, I, I was too... I wasn't around for the whole Tiny Tim thing. I just got bits and pieces of it. ...is about the first time. How much will you bet? I think so, Marsha. 200 For $200. A world-famous musician said he lost his virginity to a chesty 30-year-old blonde who sang the blues. Was that musician Lawrence Welk, <laughs> Liberace, or Zubin Mehta? Who was it? I just want to end this. I don't even want to know the answer to this one. Can we just get to the part where this stops? We got to go through five of these people? There's no way. There's no time. Is this an hour-long show? John and Greg, say hello to Warren Lyons, who runs a therapy group called The Joy of Singing. And Joy Rippett, founder and owner of Roommate Finders. Yeah, I figured, I, I, I knew Tiny Tim, uh, you know, the whole, yeah. I, I just didn't think he was the sort to basically admit he's almost predatorial with his, I don't know. But, uh, you know, I guess, uh, sure, why not? You're always been a little behind. Miss Vicky. <laughs> but what exactly is roommate finder service? We sell roommates. You sell? <laughs> we put people together to share living accommodations. Um, wow, pre-internet, that's pretty damn cool. Like a roommate, sir, a roommate like a liaison person. Find the right roommate with our help. That's pretty cool. Mainly males and females. That's becoming very popular. That's exactly what I tried. Yes, we did, Katron. Uh, yeah, it didn't take long to go over everything wrong that's going on here. It's just a matter of what they're going to add to it at this yeah. point. Uh, Warren, uh, what do you do in the joy of singing a therapy workshop? Well, it's not therapy, John. It's a workshop for anybody who wants to stand alone, sing in front of others without fear, without self-criticism, and with joy. Very that's, simple and very powerful. And that's great. Joy Ward, we'd love to talk to you longer, but we're running a little late. And we know you'd like to win some money, so let's get on with that awful quiz. You both know the rules, and your first category has to do with recreation. How much would you care to bet? 200. I mean, can he be any more vague? Your first, your first question is on recreation. I mean... Sure. We're a team. For $200. One of these famous people said... I tried marijuana once, but it didn't do anything for me. Was it 
Anita Bryant, uh. John Wayne, the Reverend Jerry Falwell, or Ronald Reagan. Who was it? I feel like I've seen Jackie Jackie O say that before. You think it's Reagan? I'm probably wrong, but like as soon as he said her, I was like, God, that sounds familiar. Okay. Who was agreed. It? Anita Bryant. I'm sorry, but that was said in an interview with John Wayne. By John Wayne. He did, did say that he had tried marijuana. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't a big fan of the marijuana. It wasn't cancerous enough. Didn't he say that in the high and the mighty? I don't know. <laughs> well, your next category has to do with language. How much would you care to bet? Two hundred. Sure. Go. Go. He, he looks like if Matthew McConaughey didn't make it in Hollywood. You know. How much? We're gonna have two hundred dollars. Sure. For two hundred dollars, which of the following words was voted the worst sounding word in the English language? Was it flatulence, soybeans, <laughs> oh. pusillanimous, scab, or cacophony? First of all, none of these words are nearly as like gag inducing as the word panties. Oh God, I can't even say it. But whatever, we'll see what that what this is. Which was it? Scab. 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 Uh, I'm sorry again, but it was cacophony. Oh yeah, moist is a popular one. Yeah. And it was voted by the National Association of Teachers of Speech. Uh-huh. Yes, I'd have voted for cacophony. I actually enjoy that word. I'll I'll, I'll whip it out every once in a while. You know, for scum. <laughs> okay, your third question has to do with holy matrimony. How much would you care to bet? You How much have we got left? A hundred? We only have a hundred. hundred dollars. Oh, sure, that works. For one hundred dollars, one of these men said he'd broken nearly all of his marriage vows. Was that person Tom Snyder? <laughs> Former Congressman Wilbur Mills? Pat Boone? Or John Denver? Who was it? I would just guess the musician because they tend to be more honest and open about that kind of shit than, you know, a, an actor or a, what was that, a congressman. Yeah, so I'm saying John Denver, too. Yeah, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't just your natural logic go between these choices with not knowing anything else? Y- you go with the musician on this one. Wilbur Mills. I'm sorry, but that was... He told me so. Wilbur told me so. That was said in a... He told me last night and said I broke the law. That was said in a People magazine interview by Pat Boone. Uh, you don't have any money... I, I forgot Pat Boone sang too. <laughs> I forgot Pat Boone also. Oh, well. Left, but we do have one more question for you, and we'll play it for a consolation prize. <laughs> and, and the category has to do with famous women in history. Which one of these famous women in history... Had three breasts. Guys, I'm 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 signing off. Signing off. I'm not even gonna dignify this game show with finding out what the answer to that question is. Marcia, did you have to spoil it? And and are, uh, what? She's the only famous three-breasted lady. What about the lady from Total Recall? What about the lady from Total Recall? All right, this was before Total Recall. Ah, oh, God. I tell you what. You guys have been great. I'm going to do my quick outro. Don't uh, skedaddle too fast. If everybody leaves at the same time, then I'm sitting here alone doing an outro, and I feel all weird. You know what I'm saying? So just keep saying goodbye to each other for a minute while I do my spiel, Okay. And thanks so much for hanging out on a on a Thanksgiving night. Really lovely. It was totally unexpected. We got Rhino and Marsha and Katron and Sanj and James and Magic Man and DDH. I'm going to miss some names now. Um, Vince. Duh, duh. You see, I've already forgotten the ones I've read already. Thomas was chilling. I don't know. If you were here, it was fun to hang out with you. And again, this was sort of uh, just a off-the-cuff stream. I'll be back Sunday night 
in all likelihood, uh, with the regularly scheduled program. That's uh, 10 p.m. Eastern. Hopefully, we'll have Tony and Michelle on. If you're watching this later, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, hit the like button? I'm assuming if you got this far, you might have liked what you saw. And then uh, if you really liked it, I'd say subscribe and then hit the notification bell so you can know when the stream is live and come on into the chat and hang out with these fine folk. You know, it's a good time. Uh, so, yeah, you can also leave a comment or share the video. That's all the stuff. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Happy Thanksgiving. Save a little bit of that turkey for me, will you? I mean, you can't really, but I don't know. Just, just somehow, just get a telepod and just, just zap, zap me some uh, turkey, will you? I want some turkey. All right. Uh, have a good night. Bye.